Pull on up a chair. You're at Camp Video Games, y'all. Hello there, and welcome to Camp Video Games. This is Junior Counselor Sean, and with me is Junior Counselor Josh. Oh, hey there, campers. Welcome. And look out for the mutated dog rats in the woods when you're hiking, because they're coming for you, and I'm itchy. (laughs) And I'm tasty. So, uh, (laughs) here at Camp Video Games, we are today talking about the Keeper's Diary, colon, a biohazard story, or maybe side story. Um, Great job, everybody. (laughs) But, okay. It's okay. The Keeper's Diary, a biohazard story. It's like, you know, Star Wars, Rogue One, or no, what was it? Rogue One. Rogue One was a Star, a Star Wars, Wars story. story. Yeah. Um, which, uh, you know, okay, this is a fan film that was came out. was the only out, good one, too. It, uh, which one? Rogue One? Yeah. Yeah, that was that was good. Um, it was the last Star Wars I saw, yeah. and I think that's it for me with Star Wars, at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, out. But this will not be the last Resident Evil uh, fan film I'll ever watch, and it also won't be the last Resident Evil uh, media in general that I'll consume. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Keeper's Diary came out in 2024 and it uh, is... Can, can I ask exactly what... This is just like months old as we're recording. As we recorded, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Three months, four um, months. Uh, we're recording in uh, mid-September. <clears throat> yeah, let's let's check the official date here. But uh, so the Keeper's Diary, it's a real short 20-minute uh, fan film, uh, which means... Thankfully, it does not overstay its welcome like so many uh, projects can very easily do. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give it credit for that. It came out two months ago, and we're recording this in mid-September. Yeah. Can I invite, before we get into it, yes. um, as you are the Resident Evil expert uh, It's in ruined this relationships. <laughs> that um, you were like, let's do a fan film instead of one of the major studio films that came out at the peak of Resident Evil hype in the early 2000s. So the very, like what oh, go state ahead, your case your for that. Yeah. Well, okay. The reason I decided to watch this, uh, well, I, I watched it because it's a Resident Evil related media and that, that gets me right from the get go. Like I'm in, I am your target audience. Uh, who, uh, what's his name? Andrew Solo, I believe is the, uh, director, writer, producer. He, he did the work. Um, Andrew Solo and, uh, through his channel residents of evil, which is a great resource for Resident Evil fans. I chose this because this is the most related to Resident Evil 1 in terms of what's been put on film. Mm -hmm. Uh, After we... uh, So, last discussion, we talked our way through Resident Evil 1 remake from 2002, and there is not a good straight adaptation of that. Right. At least until we talk about the remake of resident evil two, which is coming up next. And once we get through that, we're then going to watch resident evil. Welcome to raccoon city, which is a adaptation that kind of amalgamizes resident evil one remake and resident evil two remake specifically. Interesting. It is interesting and it's a great concept, but this uh, film, the keeper's diary is based on the, uh, diary that Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine can find as they're exploring the Spencer mansion. And it basically tracks a umbrella employees descent into T virus induced zombie dumb zombification. And so it starts off with him just talking about card games. Then he goes into the fact that there's been an outbreak and then he starts exhibiting symptoms and then the the classic line at the the last entry that this 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 poor keeper was able to uh, write on a typewriter using periods and spacing and like yeah. got, like you just imagine a guy with a zombie going like chuk, 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 ding yeah chuk, 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 chuk. Uh, itchy it, tasty the last the last entry in 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 in, in consciousness yeah which um, I mean. I don't want to dive too deep into critique quite yet before we've gotten everything out there. But like, uh, I had this complaint last week about like how stupid that writing is. (laughs) And this, this fan film feels like a celebration of that found 
uh, piece of lore in the game that I found so incredibly stupid. Sure, sure, but this, so, uh, this is uh, we're pretty we're on pretty different levels of alignment. Me and the makers of this movie, it feels like this. This is this is a little bit of writing that came out nearly thirty years ago. Yeah, and in nineteen ninety six, you can still find the Keeper's Diary, and it's the same entries. And at at the time, and we we say this all the time here at Camp Video Games. At the time it was released, this was big stuff. When I was 10 years old, this was like an introduction to like horror literature in some ways for me, mm-hmm. like reading all of the entries in Resident Evil. You get so much background information and it, it really helps flesh out the world that you're trying to survive. Oh, yeah. Like I'm, I'm not knocking the attempt that was made in the original game. Um, like I understand the, the lack of like resources and attention given to writing in games in the 90s. Right. Um, and that like you're saying that is an innovation in storytelling and world building but they chose to make this film in 2024 yes, yes, yes. and chose to keep it so close to the source material and that's where i'm like this is just not clicking for me this is so it's a independently i i believe they they uh did some crowdsourcing to get the the funding for this movie and uh but you know, it's not beholden to studio executives. It's not Capcom right. saying we need it to be this way. So it 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 is like, you know, when people like put in way too much work on their Halloween costumes. <laughs> it's like this yeah, is yeah. kind of the the film version of that, where like they they're they're doing. I mean, these people are wearing like Comic Con like appearance level. Mm-hmm. Cosplay, cosplay that's the word i'm looking for cosplay mm-hmm. of 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 resident evil characters uh like just to kind of keep going into like what this film is it, it starts off with jill valentine exploring the spencer mansion and uh big props actually because first and foremost they like they captured this and this is an important thing when when talking about adaptations and when talking about fan films is they i i f- wholeheartedly believe that they their attention to detail is down to the the layout of the rooms. They yep. successfully recreated the hallway that you access the keeper's diary from. It's 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 an accomplishment. It this, this there's a lot to celebrate, but there's also details in it that just don't completely make sense to me or matter or matter. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Um, like for me, um, got like watching this is raised. It's like sort of like opened the Pandora's box of my brain of this like exploration of adaptations that we're on. Yeah. Of like, um, like I'll admit I'm the I'm the one on this journey who's like I don't really care about video game adaptations. I'm like I'm on like an exploration for like can someone do it well? I don't like look forward to them. Yeah, yeah. Does yeah. that make sense? Whereas I have three different copies of the first Resident Evil novelization. Yeah. Just because if I find it, I'm just gonna buy it because I what if I lose the other two? Right. Like I it's very important to me. <laughs> like incredibly important to me. And I, I've gone into a lot of detail on why adaptations really tickle my brain. Mm-hmm. And in particular, like fan films are an interesting ground that is now much more accessible to us that has not been it, like we did not have the access to the content that we have with our modern internet age like yeah i can now just log on to youtube and watch this and just watch this <laughs> yeah. or, and then and then my algorithm is just like oh you like video game adaptation fan films and i was like well yeah <laughs> welcome to camp video games yeah but then now like i'm like i'm getting like advertisements or you know suggested viewings of like silent hill you know dino crisis other resident there's there's so many resident evil fan films that just made themselves known to me after watching the keeper's diary yeah well because like what i'm getting at is like while i did not i'll just say like no no offense no knocking to the creators of this they they put their ass into it for fifty five thousand dollars to do this is like that is a shoestring um budget to do the level of production they did and they executed their vision and that they did it well. Resident evil fans who want this yep. will enjoy it. Whereas like for me now, like um, this, like this adaptation um, side of what we're doing is like a search for like, what is the ideal way to adapt a video game? 
Because like nobody really questions books being adapted to movies at this point, right? No, it's almost um, like people are only writing books to, to make, make it a movie, movies, like which is ruining yeah. a lot of literature, right? Um, and like that's something that feels sort of solved for in like the media, uh, uh or like the commercial studio world, sure. Um, whereas video games, like I think the Super Mario Brothers movie is like maybe came close, but anyway, so. Just talking on fan films. Now, at this point, there's like a spectrum where this is on one end of, for me, it was 100% fan service and yes. like didn't make me more interested in the world. It didn't expand the world for me in any way. Um, it was like, who's, who's, I don't know if, I don't remember the exact quote, but like the, uh, like the quote that's like, remember when is the most boring form of conversation. Um, I want to say it's like from The Sopranos for some reason. Okay. But I don't think that's right. Yeah, yeah, no, it is absolutely. Um, the the reminiscing is right. Yeah, like that's what this kind of fan film feels like to me. It's yeah. like, hey, this thing. Remember that thing? And like, the Mario Brothers movie did a lot of that too. Um, Are you talking the modern Mario Brothers movie? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. The, um, the Chris Pratt. And then the other end of the spectrum is a Fox in Space. Oof, a yeah, plus. That was creme like de la creme. Let what can I build in this world that will pique the interest of people who wanted more from what was given at the baseline, and that was way more appealing to me. Sure, and um, uh, if you are interested, please go back and listen <laughs> to our in-depth discussions yeah. on uh, a fox in space. And I want to reiterate: nothing I said has anything to do with the technical execution of yes, this. It's yes, like yes, yes. They did well for their audience. <laughs> and I will say that they knew what their audience was in talking about the keeper's diary. The keeper's diary was not made to say, Hey kids, have you ever heard of resident evil? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you watch this, it'll make you want to give it a chance. It, it it's, it's made for hardcore fans of, of the resident evil series who have been clamoring for a more direct adaptation of mm -hmm. the games and what and they did well here in terms of the subject matter that they chose to highlight is that this is just a, a it, it, it the, very much the same way that the Rogue One story for Star Wars is. It, it's all about this little side story that has a large impact on the overall narrative, but could also just as easily. We don't need this, but people appreciate it if they are in the same uh, pants that I'm wearing right now, which is mm -hmm. the Resident Evil diehard fan pants. Yeah. They are not attractive pants. Yeah. Um, and for it to like I think reach the level of Rogue One, it would have needed uh, about ten billion dollars. No, just I mean like I, I had zero attachment to any like there was no development of character uh in any of this. It was no. very much going through the motions of this is like what this is a little tiny expansion of what's the actual literal text in the keeper's diary, which back to like what I was saying about like, it's 2024. Like I get, you're trying to make it something that's very, um, authentic to the game yes. down to like designing your sets. So D down to sound effects. Yeah. Taken from the game, but, using the, like the score from the game. Yeah. Plenty, but I plenty. think this is where like too much fan control becomes, um, uh, like a hindrance in a way like uh, this is I'm going to attempt to make this analogy and it's going to maybe make me sound like a dick because it's about my own work but like so I do uh, these uh, like I, I do these cover songs of this like Japanese band and I'll take translations and if you do a, a very literal translation yeah. and try to sing that over the music it sounds stupid and other people on YouTube have done it and that stuff doesn't really get as many views as mine. <laughs> like, uh, I take some liberties to like rewrite it so that it's a good song with the same story being told as the original lyrics. Yes, Does you're that not, make sense? You're not so, like, painting by numbers. You are you are allowing some room to to fill it in as you see it. Yeah, and I would have enjoyed this more if they had done basically done some writing, yeah. done some character work. Um, instead of just being like, this is the actual text of the Keeper's Diary. We're going to show him typing itchy tasty. Because yeah. <laughs> remember last week, I was like, that's the stupidest part of the game to yes. me. <laughs> anyway. Now, to be fair, you did not finish the game. Right. There's a lot of other stupid stuff in that game. 
<laughs> Almost got a spit take out of Junior <laughs> Counselor Josh there. Um, uh, no, okay. So let's talk now about what's what's going on when we we start the movie, the show. What is uh, the 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 short film? It's a short, it's a short film. film. Yeah, we start the short film and it opens up with a a, a Nietzsche quote. Nietzsche, yeah, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. and um. I, uh, I I I get where they're going with this in terms of like hey like let's make like tonally like you know scream into the madness and the madness screams back or the void or I forget this specific quote. But this is the yeah if you stare into the abyss it stares right that's back. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I think I was also mixing a little Hunter S. Thompson there. Um, <laughs> but uh, tonally makes perfect sense. But we're watching a video game. Yeah. adaptation when you pair it with this is all leading up to a guy typing itchy tasty <laughs> yeah. not- i think if i were to try to summarize like the the accomplishments of the keeper's diary uh it it's that they they nailed the live action adaptation aesthetics the cinematography is fantastic the lighting the the mood i mean everything is done very very well yeah really good strong cgi monster um for for what this I, is i was impressed by the 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 cgi monster again i'm, the, I'm sort of it's called a hunter that is the name of the monster i'm, I'm couching this all in like a fifty five thousand dollar budget like yeah you did a decent job you know fifty five thousand. Like, i mean well we should we probably should mention that this podcast costs quite a lot to, <laughs> per episode for us so you know in terms of you know design and uh you know function where you know where i'd say you know we're probably spending right now i mean like every second i'm talking that's another 10k yeah um very expensive to make a podcast <laughs> <laughs> now okay the the hook here's the here's the reason that i believe uh our 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 dear andrew solo uh the the director writer producer of this uh, I, he managed to, to nab a few of the original, uh, uh, actors who worked mm-hmm. on resident evil. The keeper in this is played by the actor who plays Chris Redfield in the full motion videos at the beginning of resident evil one. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the narration is narrated by the actor who plays Chris Redfield in resident evil remake so we've got two different generations of resident evil that are coming in and we also have uh the 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 title voiceover that says resident evil the keeper's diary that's the same guy who says resident evil at the beginning of the games Mm -hmm. like they they got the people they did the work they have the connections and um it's it's really quite fan servicey to know that like okay like these guys they're you know they they're notoriously known for being the only like English speaking actors in, in Japan when they needed some English speaking actors uh-huh. for the, <laughs> uh, for the games to be produced, yeah. which explains a lot of the bad voice work and uh, the, the acting in the full motion videos is fine. It's, it's quite good. Uh, yeah. But well, um, for the keeper's diary, I'm like, Oh wow. They got all these guys and they only spent $55,000 on all this. And I was like, Oh, well, like basically what I'm saying is like folks, sometimes you can just like hire your heroes. It's it, yeah. it, it won't break the bank. Sometimes. I mean, that was probably, well, uh, I'm just going to throw out a number and say it was 10 to 15 K of the budget. That sounds fair. Yeah. 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 Um, which is respectable. Um, I mean, you know, they, they probably got paid, I hope a fair wage for probably a week's worth of work or whatever. Um, there's something you said that like, Oh, you're talking about like this this actor um, who I, I just had up on the screen for anybody watching on YouTube, uh, the guy who was the original Chris Redfield and now is the keeper. Um, yes, Charlie Kroslovsky. Being hired uh, in Japan and like, I think you maybe did you use the words like serviceable for their live action footage? Oh, I think it's fine. And I think this has, for me, some of the same problems that the RE1 remake had where they took what was sort of a like B level, like um, uh, like sort of cult classic vibe, and tried to treat it with a lot of seriousness. Yeah, and I think when your budget is this low, it would do you a service to maybe not be so precious and serious. I I completely agree. Yeah, it's like if you tried to remake the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and but like in the in the intro, they've got that 
you know how stupid movies always have the slowed down pop music mm-hmm. thing where it's like yeah it drives but me nuts. If, if 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 for the rocky horror picture show they had like let's do the time <laughs> warp again yeah like, with strings and tubular Nick bells cave singing it or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> um no i completely agree with you i think uh the the real charm of the resident evil series comes from the campiness yeah and that campiness cannot be manufactured it is a byproduct that is completely incidental and especially when you zero in on again the literal text of that keeper's diary yeah, from the game which absolutely. is extremely campy and b-movie level now, in defense of of itchy tasty uh-huh how cheesy is think about this from night of the living dead they're coming to get you barbara but again, it's like it fits the aesthetic, mm-hmm. right? And it's also 1960, <laughs> and that is also like a like that's a budget production, oh, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I I don't know. I'm also like uh, I don't know. I'm not the core demo, uh, right? <laughs> so sure, like, take sure. anything I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> as as a as a member of the core demo, as a guy who like was getting you know, updates on the production of this and, yeah, yeah. you know, like sees all the rigmarole go behind the production of the film. Uh, I, I have to say, like, I think when we first decided to talk about this, I wanted this to be my like introduction, be like, hi, resident evil community. Like I'm a big fan and I'm also contributing what I can yeah. in terms of content for people to enjoy related to resident evil specifically in this series that we're running. Um, and I did not feel like they had wasted my time as a Resident Evil fan, but I was worried that they would waste your time because <laughs> you're not a Resident Evil fan. If this was an hour, I would say yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but given its runtime, uh, I'm I'm ha- again I'm happy to like consume it as this exploration uh, I'm on of like is good video game adaptation possible in some consistent way? Yeah, you oh, know? that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um. And like I'll also note, I, I was thinking about this earlier that like um, because I'm new to Resident Evil, but I've been a gamer, quote unquote, my whole life. That like I don't want to be dismissed as like, oh, he just doesn't have nostalgia for the IP, so he's going to dismiss it out of hand. Like I'll say uh, to my own defense, like I never played Earthbound until this year. That's right, and. That shit blew me fucking away. Yeah, I'm glad. <laughs> you know, <laughs> whereas um, the first Resident Evil, I was like, I'm hating this. And the Resident Evil 2 remake, I'm like, I'm having a pretty good time. Yeah. I'm not a diehard fan that's going to consume the rest of it, but I'm having a good time. We'll talk about that in the next episode. Coming next. So, like, just to, like, be- let people know, like, this isn't a show where it's just, like, we're wearing rose-colored glasses about the IP we have nostalgia for from our youth, and that's it. And we hate everything else. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you want to hear us like really like discuss something that we both care very deeply about, listen back to our Final Fantasy VII series because that was that was a discussion of two diehard fans who are trying to fairly criticize this game and mm-hmm. to give it you know we give it all of its dues, but we also you know take right. take note of the 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 shortcomings. Right. So we're not we're not the remember when life was better. Yeah. Like because like <laughs> guess not what the goal here. it's always been bad. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, uh, back to the movie itself. So, so it started, uh, the way that they like structure this narrative is that, yeah, Jill's walking through the Spencer mansion during the events of resident evil one. She finds the diary and then we go into voiceover from, uh, yeah, from the keeper, uh, and just, you know, it, the, the scenes, the way that they, they, it, it, it's it's kind of a shame because they are so beholden to the original text that it might not be the best way to like structure a narrative where it's just like, okay, like here's a little snapshot of a bunch of dudes smoking and playing cards mm-hmm. and then, oh, science monsters. So, yeah, I'll say about that scene. I thought like, okay, they were doing this thing where they go around the poker table and everybody makes a move. And I thought, oh, they're trying to... This is like a clever little writing trick. You're showing the personality of everybody based on how they're going to maneuver a poker game. Um, and then the poker game ends and that has nothing to do with anything. It was just that they were playing... <laughs> like, in, the, in the text, they were like, playing cards. All these characters were still just talking heads to me. So um, what it really does is that the keeper... So we're, we're, we're seeing 
and hearing this through the keeper's perspective and the keeper he's he's the dog keeper he's he's the kennel master for the secret laboratory in the middle of the arclay forest in the Mm -hmm. spencer mansion see i know all the right terminology (laughs) i've been playing the games i'm not even reading this but the I mean, it starts off with the the keeper saying, like, played cards with a couple dudes. I think one of them cheated. What an asshole. Yeah. And that eats next, up, like, the next two or three minutes of runtime. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. And then you just see the guys, like, at the end, he's like, it looks like I win. Sorry. And he's just like, ugh. Yeah. And I thought, oh, now there's a dynamic here. There between is, the characters. but it doesn't get played but up it, enough. It's because it goes the keeper, nowhere. Yeah. The keeper is like, I, I accuse, I think, Steve of, of cheating at cards. And he kills Steve later. Mm-hmm. But it's just, like, so, like... It's not like it wasn't they didn't take full advantage of what that could have been. You're thinking like a A plus writer, like in terms of like what could have been done with because because the whole you got to be real frugal with with your filmmaking and with the way that you take people's times. You need to really like you you cut all the fat. You just show the important stuff. Nothing else. And that's why I set up earlier. Like I understand this is fan service for fans who want this kind of material. Yes. Uh, Not knocking it for that. A plus job to them on that side. They really, they really (laughs) did do it. Yeah. Um, But they, they just, they, there, there are some missed opportunities here where you could have just fleshed it out a little bit more. And then you've got a nice big juicy meal mm-hmm. instead of uh, you know this is like this is just a this is a handful of peanuts right now. Yeah, I don't remember uh, when he kills somebody later. Is it one of the guys in like the biohazard suits? Yeah, because well, that was another problem for me. Is like the latter half of it is just mostly guys in biohazard suits telling him stuff. I'm like, I don't know who that is. I don't, (laughs) am I supposed to care who this is? That's talking to him. There's actually some incontinuity uh, with what this film is doing because what the the guys that you see in the quote unquote biohazard suits, they are dressed up in full like military SWAT team regalia. And that is, these are guys that are just cosplaying as the character hunk from resident evil Mm two and you haven't beat it yet but once you beat resident evil two there's a bonus game called the fourth survivor and you play as a umbrella military like uh what's the word not a freelance soldier but a a, like a private security yeah yeah and um uh he is uh he's basically tasked with collecting the g-virus sample uh and then escaping with it to to hide to cover the tracks for umbrella Mm-hmm. And he's a huge like fan favorite in terms of like he his his is just code name hunk. We don't know anything about him in the the canonical lore of Resident Evil besides that he's like he's got like code name the Grim Reaper and he's just like a super badass super soldier and he's wearing like the the guy who gives the keeper his bio suit mm-hmm. is dressed like hunk but in the text. The keeper says, like, oh, so and so showed up wearing a spacesuit and he gave me one too. And his suit is completely different from from the suit that is is worn by the man who gave him the suit. The man who gave him a suit is wearing battle armor, whereas yeah. he's wearing a like a decontamination suit. And like it it doesn't match up with the text. Yeah. And I just that bothered me a little because that is a little too fan servicey is that they had enough people who wanted to dress up like hunk because all you really need to do is just buy a bunch of like modern tactical gear and then you're like look I'm a character like in the game see right. like oh I've got an mp5 and some goggles and yeah the, the- oh, I tried to pull the clip up but I think it's a later clip than when he gets the suit but but my problem was the these guys speaking to him in the latter half wearing that is like Am I supposed to know who that character is? Is this supposed to be a random grunt? It's it's uh, literally there for zero the, character it's development. Hunk. Oh my god! It's like hunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that that did bother me. Um, and the 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 gratuitous amount of like Queen references in this too. Uh, the, that's that's in the game somehow. Somewhat. Um, in, I assumed like there's a there's a poster of Jennifer Aniston, which I chalked up to like oh it's 1998, and then there's yeah. one of Queen that I was like. I'm guessing that's in the game. So (laughs) I was like, what a random choice. Otherwise in resident evil Two, Claire Redfield, who's the character you've been playing through as, um, she, uh, her jacket. uh, So you're playing through for the first time. So you've got her, her original costume, which is a little bit more modernized from the original resident evil two costume where Mm -hmm. like for me, like Claire Redfield is like 
a biker chick who's wearing black spandex under some uh, pink red cutoffs and then a pink red denim jacket. And on her back, it's a queen lyric made in heaven. Oh, okay. Um, and apparently like Shinji Mikami, who's the director of Resident Evil 2, big queen fan, I guess. And so they, they snuck Respect. in some queen references throughout. Yeah. Um, and Chris Redfield also, one of his alternate costumes has the same. Insig- it's like an angel holding yeah. maybe a bomb or something. And if, if I'm going to be extremely nitpicky, there's one, it's uh, just the idea. And this is back to like the original, the original just Resident Evil world building or lore is like the idea of these guys living, these like middle aged men living dorm style in this mansion is already kind of weird. Yeah. And the fact that they'll just have like a, a queen and Jennifer Aniston poster taped up on the wall, this middle aged man. It's like, well, whatever. Uh, it just like, it made me like ask more questions than it like did like world building, which is normally when you're fleshing out a set with uh, posters and stuff. It's yeah. To tell you, sometimes it'll be like a little nod of like the set decorator or the like showrunners like, oh, I want to put up like some small band no one's heard of or a whatever. A great example, I um, would but, say. But like is... it still usually will fill out a little bit of that character's background. The one that comes to mind for me of all things is like Nick Miller in New Girl has a poster of uh, it's this band J.J. Brooks and the Uptown Sound, which is like a Chicago sort of like soul funk band from like the early 2000s. Uh, and I was like, he would listen to that band, you know, <laughs> like set like the set decoration does something for me in a, in a show or a movie. Set decoration is also a way for the director to, again, like to put their interests out there. Uh, right. I, I think about in that, evil, the in, example in, I gave is like both. Evil Dead. Yeah. You go into the basement of, of of Evil Dead, and there's a poster for The Hills Have Eyes. The right. uh, and they were oh and, and but the the poster is ripped in half because they're saying you know that was uh, uh, Sam Raimi saying like you know we're so much scarier than what um, Wes Craven's doing <laughs> that uh, you know they we can't even and then you start seeing in in another Wes Craven movie you'll see Evil Dead and they they do this kind of like detente back and forth where it's a very fun. Yeah kind of poking fun at filmmakers and is evil dead uh is that one like they're in the cabin yeah. is where this poster is yeah yeah, yeah. it's like i might buy that <laughs> you know oh, i didn't buy it at all because i mean in in the story of evil dead it's like this like elderly archaeologist who has like a cabin that he's like you know rented out or his family yeah. owns uh-huh. and it's like i'm like this 60 year old man is not what especially in yeah, 1981 yeah. the hills have <laughs> eyes is like 1974 maybe uh-huh. and it's like i was like i don't think he was like in like buying film posters back in the day like you had to like live at like a movie theater to get that type or like uh-huh. the, you, you don't just go to uh the uh, to babbages or whatever yeah. to, to get the this like film memorabilia stuff that was way more niche at the time yeah but again think of the tone and the campiness of evil dead oh sure like and it works it, it works uh like it doesn't like stand out as much and say look at me whereas in here it's like this very serious like and i'm like jennifer aniston <laughs> <laughs> Pre nose job, yeah. <laughs> she have you seen Leprechaun before she had her nose job? No. <laughs> it's a, a, a shocking difference. Not to like, you know, there's no you know, whatever, but uh, it, it's, she's like two different actresses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I was like, you know, it's ninety eight. I get it. It's it's doing a little bit of setting, place setting. Sure, sure. Um, the so yeah, we've got the tough guy poker scene. We've got the 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 hey, here's a a, a hunter scene. And I, actually, this is the first time you ever see a hunter in a live action adaptation mm-hmm. even like from the official stuff it's one of the scarier monsters from the original game it's so dangerous and scary and they never they never tackled it but they uh they got the same guy who played wesker back to play albert wesker um this is a little bit of uh foreshadowing to the fact that wesker who's the the lead uh he's the 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 chief of the stars unit, which is mm-hmm. like the special tactics and rescue services team. Like he is, uh, he's secretly working for umbrella. So he's doing some like, you know, double crossing on his side. And then you actually learn that he lures the entire stars team to the mansion so that he could study 
how well they hold up against these bioweapons. So it, it's like all of all what happens in Resident Evil 1 is actually, well, first, it's all it's all Wesker's fault. And it's also, uh, it's like, it's, it's, they're being studied and like analyzed. It's like, uh, remember in Street Fighter 2, the animated movie, yeah. when they had those cyborgs like testing their combat skills and like, giving, oh, it's over 9,000 kind of stuff. Yeah. Like that's happening in Resident Evil without you knowing it. So uh, maybe this should have been a bigger part of the discussion of the first game. Is is the whole deal with Umbrella, they're trying to develop bioweapons for the U.S. military, and they decided mutant freaks is the way to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it starts with, okay, so Umbrella Pharmaceutical Company, it's, uh, and I think I tried to make the comparison, they're like, they're, they're like our Procter and Gamble here yeah. in the real world, where they're just this, you know, or I guess, you know, Bayer or what, what's the what's the big one uh, um, oh, Pfizer yeah like Pfizer is definitely making zombies somewhere um, yeah. and not with vaccines okay guys <laughs> come on now this shows anti-vax <laughs> and just kidding don't don't whatever don't block our satire stuff. satire satire yeah. um, okay so umbrella uh, is started as kind of a shell corporation, as an umbrella corporation, um, for for uh, this guy, his name's Oswald Spencer and James Marcus. There, then this is, I mean, this is me like pulling. I'm giving myself yeah. a wedgie well, right now. Th- this does help me, like especially with that monster scene, to, like understand why these guys are like, yeah, that's that's checks out. That thing's doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they're 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 if you developing, don't have that lore, they're that's developing very viruses weird. that can then turn people and it's you use it like you would drop it like a dirty bomb in a place where you can then completely disrupt a military if you just like drop them like you know an airborne disease that turns everybody into zombies that they turns can't them into back. mutant super soldiers well no 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 because <laughs> the, the t-virus is if it's administered in a controlled environment you can create specific mutant monsters but if you're just happenstance infected by the t-virus you become a zombie when you uh like you like lose consciousness. I don't think you actually technically die before you're like a zombie, quote unquote. But you know, what is a zombie in the real yeah. world? Like 20 Which days is, later, still zombies yeah. in my brain. Well, that's kind of what this, the keeper's diary shows yeah. you. Yeah. It's more just a loss of humanity. Yeah. And, uh, so um, umbrella is making these viruses and, uh, it's not just for the U S military. They're, they're selling to anybody who's paying. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of like, in you know especially as we get through resident evil 2 there's a lot of espionage and intrigue uh especially if you play through leon's campaign there's a lot more of the the corporate espionage side gets mixed into the story mm-hmm. but uh from you know from your perspective as playing through uh resident evil 1 i mean you just know that you found a mansion full of monsters and then as you continually explore it you then find the source as you go underground into their underground laboratories mm-hmm. and so the people that live in um uh the the mansion grounds uh, of resident evil 1 They live in a section that you would be able to access right after you beat the snake in the mansion, which I know that was your like press stop. I'm (laughs) done. Fuck this game, Uh, which is, I think, a lot of players experience where it's like you get to yawn the snake and you're like, oh, fuck this game. Like, God damn it. I didn't save. And that's fine. But um, what they're doing, I mean, you know, the pros of the Keeper's Diaries that they're showing all of this, like they've they've successfully taken all of this backstory and all of the all of the little pieces, and they they made a pretty convincing, um, you know, adaptation of of the events. Uh, too true to the book, though. You know, it's yeah. like uh, I think people a lot of people didn't like um, uh, who directed that Naked Lunch was uh, was that Cronenberg? Oh, I don't know who made the movie. Um, but the, like that was like. Like some parts of it, they were like, "Ooh, that was way too." Like they they stuck too much to the source material right. in certain cases, and you know, it's uh, yeah, adaptations aren't just about like uh, copy and pasting. It's it's about finding what is the core. What what at the core is the intriguing part? Can we bring the video up right now? Yeah. Um. Uh. This is another one of the little <laughs> uh, uh throwbacks to uh, specifically Resident Evil Three, 
when the keeper is being treated by the doctor, the doctor hands him a bottle of Aquacure and Safsprin. Right. And those are um, a part of a puzzle in Resident Evil 3. And they're, they're umbrella pharmaceutical products. That's like, this is how most people in, in Raccoon City and the rest of the world know umbrella is that they, oh, they, they make aspirin and like cough medicine. Yeah. And that was absolutely a moment for me um, that was like, this is bad movie making. Yes. This is 100% yes. uh, just so to just like, an Easter egg for a fan to go, oh, I did the, the yep. thing from the game. You That's know? right. And like, I already played that game. And I knew I was like, oh, it's the thing from the game. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Absolutely. Which again, like uh, this is not a um, plague of just fan made stuff. Like that was the Mario movie was 80%. The thing, you know, the thing from yeah, the yeah. thing. <laughs> so I still haven't seen that. What's the, what's the worst part of that movie? Like what's, what's the thing that I should like well, one really that, embrace myself for the new modern that modern Mario, Mario talks movie. and has like a full personality probably. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it is, it is a lot of that of things are just happening and being shown so that you can go, Oh, the thing I know, you know, like, yeah. like there's, um, like the, one of the most Easter eggy things is uh like uh oh like he he has to have like a fight against Donkey Kong and they pan to the audience and for like two seconds you see not even two seconds like a second you see like Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong oh hell yeah yeah oh uh, I, I guess I'm right? still- <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, you see it might just be a matter of like intellectual ability where I'm just like yeah, yeah I probably, love those probably dudes. the most offensive part of it actually is um. Instead of doing like arrangements of mostly like Koji Kondo's music, yeah, they just put in like pop songs oh, that no. the parents will know, and it's like the parents will know the Koji Kondo music, right? That would supplement the action extremely well if you got somebody good to arrange it. Anyway, that's a different. No, no I, I really do wonder how many kids these days, like how many you know under ten year old children are who are playing Mario stuff. How many of their parents didn't play Mario? Like right. it seemed because that's a legacy kind of thing. Like I don't know if you're naturally drawn to Mario in this day and age, unless it's a cherished icon that the family all like kind of rallies behind. Like unless you've got great memories of playing Super Mario Brothers with mom and dad. Like you know, like I don't know what kids would be like. Ooh, I love plumbers and yeah, <laughs> you know, like like there's there's enough colorful options these days that I don't think that that's the it's 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 not being bought on curb appeal it's being bought on like a legacy appeal yeah like the the thing i saw maybe i've mentioned this on another episode so i'll try to be quick about this but they took david weiss who uh composed donkey kong country's fantastic soundtrack they took like one of his main themes from that when they enter the donkey kong world cool and i don't i haven't verified this but the claim was like oh they did actually like arrange and record a soundtrack and like there it's like the um, establishing shots of the Donkey Kong world has an arrangement of his music that goes really well with the action. And then you see the final cut and they just slap take on me over it. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Or so, it's, I don't remember if it's take on me. I'm pretty sure that's in the movie, but like it sucks. Anyway, back to this movie. Can we thank David Weiss for the DK rap? Ah, I forget. And that actually makes it in too, but um, I forget if it's him or somebody else. I think that was somebody else. Well, yeah. we'll talk about that movie more in depth someday, at some other yeah. time. Um, now, as uh, the thing about this, what what the Keeper's Diary? It, it actually makes me ask a few more questions because okay, there is a quote unquote outbreak in the facilities. And we know as players of Resident Evil that the only way that you get infected is by being bitten or attacked Mm -hmm. or like, I guess, like directly exposed to the virus. Like, I okay, ooh, going to put on my nerd hat right now. Yeah, because this is something I I kind of wondered about myself. I am I am currently reading through uh, the uh, another Resident Evil side story right now. This is the second book in S.D. Perry's series of resident evil novelizations that i keep bringing up and it's called caliban cove and it takes place directly after the events of resident evil one and before the events 
of Resident Evil 2. And it focuses on the character Rebecca Chambers, who, if you've only played the Jill campaign, you haven't seen her. But she's the youngest member of the Star's Bravo team. And she's a medic and a kid genius and um, uh, like a scientist. And in this one, she goes to another facility with uh, with some other Star's members. Uh, and they're exploring and they realize that there's another monster lab happening on a sea coast and one of the people gets infected just by scratching their eye after touching some blood like mm. covid protocol stuff right yeah. you know like 28 uh, days later stuff oh for sure yeah. the, with the blood and the eyeball yeah that's like ooh, oh, that's, that was good yeah that's really good <laughs> i wish there was a 28 days later video game <laughs> that would be fun i guess well no, they're not british whatever yeah. um but in 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 the novelization so i already read through the first book the umbrella conspiracy which covers the events of resident evil and we kind of treat those as canonical just until the series went and did what they did but um the 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 virus is not spread airborne it is not spread through anything besides like direct contact (laughs) and like sorry i'm laughing because i think remember that that graphic of like how covid spread it's just these two like plain white cartoon characters just blasting red and blue goo yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah doesn't spread quite like that well it's like i think you can like really weaponize the particles if you are specifically uh spouting off conspiracy theories mm-hmm. it like makes them more <laughs> potent yeah but is- but the question is how do the keeper get infected his foot's all fucked up and like he's like itchy yeah. tasty, but like it, what this could have done is actually clarify how does he get infected? How did this outbreak actually occur? Mm-hmm. And I, I thought, so as the movie goes on, you know, you see him get more and more gross. It reminds me of, um, I mean, it reminds me of Dawn of the Dead where you see Flyboy, like, spoiler alert, like for a 50-year-old movie, uh, like Flyboy as he deteriorates into zombie dem- No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, Peter. Peter, the, the, the white SWAT member who uh, gets bit when they're doing the truck yeah. job um you see him in different stages of uh zombification yeah. he starts off just like ow my fucking arm my fucking leg ow fuck and then you see him he's a little bit more sallow eyed and emaciated and then he's like losing his humanity more gradually and the keeper's diary does a pretty good job of i mean the the, the makeup effects all look great like no complaints there um <laughs> the little wound in his foot like that actually kind of like that was, gave me the icks, man. That was the one moment I went, Ooh, yeah, yeah. But uh, I also what know, this could have done is just show us how he got infected, like show a rat biting into his foot or yeah. whatever it is. Like it has, we need an explanation, and this makes me ask more questions. And I feel like it could have answered it. Yeah, yeah. There's not really any. Um, yeah, we don't. It just like there's not really much plot it's just a series of events there's no like conflict tension release uh it's just like watch this man descend uh and like just that one little detail i would have helped a lot yeah yeah (laughs) um because we find out in resident evil 2 that the virus is spread through rats as well it's it's black plague you know the bubonic Mm -hmm. plague where well in that case it was actually the fleas that were the problem the fleas that were on the rats and then the rats would go to the food source and then the fleas would jump off and then that infected people man this whole thing's hanging on by a thread huh Eh, (laughs) we're doing fine man (laughs) i think about that all the time (laughs) i'm just like oh god (laughs) and don't even ask me what 5g's doing to you too (laughs) oh jesus christ my family um so Okay, we like we see this go like the, the the keeper he goes from uh he goes from oh he goes from A to Z he goes from alive to zombified. <laughs> <laughs> yep, he um, sure does. Oh, another reference or maybe homage or maybe inspiration for this um uh mentioning Dawn of the Dead, but the 2004 remake of Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you watched the DVD extras on i mean movie? i probably did because in high school watching movies like that and everything you could get out of them was how i spent my time because yeah. i was not cool so and didn't go out and party and drink the, <laughs> the i don't remember the character's name i and i didn't like rewatch this for this discussion but there's a there's a bonus mini movie in the extras for dawn of the dead 2004 which uh chronicles it's basically a, a 
vlog, a video blog of the gun shop owner who lives across from the mall. Remember him? Yeah. Um, and it's him like first he's just like, well, like, you know, I do remember this yeah. actually. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of the same thing yeah. where he's just like, well, like, you know, things are going crazy. I locked the doors, I gave everybody some guns and ammo, but like now I got to just like stay here by myself. And like, it's him like starving to death. Mm -hmm. And then when they finally try to save him, he gets bit as a result. And then you see him like, bah! like turn into a zombie eventually. Um, fun stuff and for 2004 too i was like this is some compelling mm -hmm. like horror like narratives like i think horror so so resident evil it's a survival horror game so your object is to survive despite the horrors that you encounter horror being the kind of like important word here mm -hmm. uh is that like this is not scary it's tense. It's got some great environmental, like, you know, vibes going for it, but it's yeah. not scary in the least. Right. There's absolutely no tension and you got it right. There's like, there's no real plies. It's because they're so beholden to this source material that I think they get, um, they're missing the mountains for the molehills here. Yeah. And it almost feels, you know, like the most rabid fans have like a gun to their head, you know, <laughs> be mm -hmm. like, don't fuck this up. It's do it exactly the way it was. It better say itchy tasty at the end. And you if know? they're holding like, a gun to the back of your head, it's probably a samurai edge, which is a modified <laughs> Beretta M92 and nine millimeter Parabellum rounds. Yeah. And that custom just, made by Kendo. Yeah. And, and that to me goes back to that. Like, remember when is just like, it's just not very interesting to me. Even if I was a diehard resident evil fan, yeah. I'd go. Yeah. That's the stuff that was in the game. Well, here's you know? the difference. Okay. This is made. As, this is, this is fan service. The film like, yeah. And when we, I mean, we can, we can still, and I would gladly always keep talking about a Fox in space where they took the source material and they expanded it in such a way that it, when you get those Easter eggs, they're not only put in strategically, but like artistically. Yes. That's and, the difference. It's a artistic choice and they do world building. Um, like it, uh, he would use like assets that were just some thing. Yes. And then when you see it in a Fox in space, it's contextualized. Like these little towers are contextualized in a way you're like, Oh, that's like a sensor for yeah. like entering something or whatever. I believe like, I called those environmental cameos. Yeah, it feels less like it's being pointed at and yeah. being told like, look, look, remember the thing? Because <laughs> um, like I guarantee I have consumed all of the same media as these filmmakers. And mm -hmm. like, honestly, like I feel like if I had just like lived in their area code, I would have been a consultant on this. Like, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, I, sometimes I saw it looks like they're in Michigan. I, I watched somebody do a sort of background on it. Uh, so, you know, they weren't too far. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not going to drive that far. <laughs> I've, I've also found that like, if you are going to volunteer for a film production, like don't go out of your way for it. Cause yeah. like, yeah, they might say, gee, we're sure thankful for you. Here's a, here's a, you know, a, a plate of grapes and yeah. some almonds but like that's that's the most you're gonna get out of it but they're it, gonna spell your name wrong in the credits and i'm not talking from experience yeah well <laughs> not at all i'm gonna reiterate though um you know for anybody uh who who does feel the need to overly critique like technical aspects of this that again fifty five thousand dollars to make um 13 and a half minutes of footage. I have the queued up that the, the last third of the film is uh, a teaser and credits. But anyway, we'll get to that soon. Back to compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, th that's it's not a lot. It is hard. <laughs> it is very hard to make something like because I could nitpick the lighting, but I couldn't do it better myself and I don't have the money to do it better yeah. myself. Um, so it's like, I think they did very well for the resources they had. Do you remember um, that like famous painting that like somebody tried to quote unquote restore? Yeah. <laughs> like the, the, the image just instantly hit me. And made yeah. Me laugh. So it was like, it was like Jesus's face and <laughs> yeah. they like, it looked like a, looked like a Teletubby at the end. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, I, I don't know why I'm bringing that up. Maybe just because they're kind of like they're more focused on trying to emulate something than to create something. And then as a result, you come up with a less than recognizable mm -hmm. uh, uh, product. Um, the keeper's diary 
it just kind of ends to yeah it's it's 13 and a half minutes i i don't know when i see this and i hear fifty five thousand dollars i just think about how much fifty five thousand dollars could change my life right now oh for and sure like you know <laughs> for like, like i also like i've worked on a lot of like indie film sets that are making great stuff for zero dollars and mm-hmm. i just like I have a little bit where it's like, I don't think they like them telling us at the end of the movie in the credits, how much this took to like, how much this cost to make. I thought that was weird. And then also I thought it was, it's almost like an apology. (laughs) That's a good way of putting it. But like we only had (laughs) $55,000, but then like as me is like a $0 filmmaker, I'm just like $55,000. Yeah. Like, but it like, that's what I'm saying. Like I could see it all went to letting these guys who have an interest in like professional level filmmaking, practice yeah 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 in a way like where i'm like yeah that's not the tightest set i've ever seen that's not the tightest lighting i've ever seen but for i don't know how old these guys are they strike me as young amateurs that maybe have done some study maybe done some student film work um i'm like this is impressive um but it's yeah it's not gonna wow a um mainstream audience yeah um Whereas I'm sorry, I'm going to talk about Fox of Space again. Like that guy did his fucking homework. Yes, he chose an aesthetic and he executed it. Whereas these guys, it feels like, oh, this is what I was taught in film school. I'm going to execute it to the best of my ability with the number of hands and the number of dollars I have. And it's not quite Hollywood, <laughs> but it's fine. You yeah. know, I was really impressed. Uh, speaking of uh, the Keeper's Diary, like the opening shots, I thought were just gorgeous of the the mountains. And it's like drone footage, I believe. I was like, I, I even wrote like A plus B roll. I I uh, I'd venture to guess. I don't remember. I'm trying to pull it up. I'd venture to guess they purchased that footage. I don't know. <laughs> drone shots are easier and cheaper to make these days. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so I'm not gonna critique it one way or another sure, i'll sure. just agree with you I'll, uh, I'll, but i do believe there's like a layer of cgi smoke or rain over it or something no that's pretty it could good be looking. natural fog i don't know no, just, there's a layer of something over it, it. looks good to me yeah it um, lo- again to me it looks passable uh, like but i'm i'm being way too nitpicky uh so yeah the budget like the budget disclosure at the end of the movie i thought was a weird thing like thing that that'd be like a chef telling you how much they spent on a cut of meat before they <laughs> yeah. prepared it for you. They're like, I'm like, what is market price? And yeah, they're like, they'll yeah. be like, I'll tell you after you're done. Yeah. Um, and then the other strange little like closing tag uh, for the credits was the no generative AI was used in the making of this. Yeah. I was like, I was like, uh, nothing looks that like like third uh, rate. Like it, gen- it was interesting because I. On one hand, I appreciated their commitment to like, we want to keep AI out of filmmaking. Sure. And I am strongly in that camp as well. Yeah. On the other hand, again, it felt like, um, like it felt like a humble brag. Like I designed that monster in Blender. Okay. It's like, 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 don't critique me. It's like winning, (laughs) it's like winning the Super Bowl and be like, yeah, and I didn't even use steroids. (laughs) Yeah. Um, which I was like, yeah. For like what was probably a one or two man team doing that CGI monster, like it was good. It was great. I'm no, I wasn't. No complaints. I had I no mean, complaints. Well, like, it looked a little too smooth, and the lighting is always too flat on. Which those again, types of like I'm saying, like one or two man team, yeah. probably young amateurish. Like you did a good job. Yeah. Like you don't need to like <laughs> like hedge your bets here. Yeah, like, you got a bright future in the commercial <laughs> district. <laughs> there's a there's a lot to celebrate with the keeper's diary. Uh, but it's also like, I'm not begging for more as a diehard resident evil fan. Like mm-hmm. I felt like they really did no pun intended scratch that itch, <laughs> but the keeper's diary at the end is, is a fan film that is just better than its contemporaries. Like uh, just a little bit better than some of its contemporaries, not uh-huh. all of its contemporaries. Cause there's extremely good fan films being made, but it's it's not as bad as other fan. Oh boy, I've watched some really <laughs> bad fan films. Things we that should I'm like, do like a, a run, and I don't know. I don't want to like do too many things that I'm like I'm just not that into. But the idea of just a run of bad film, fa- fa- whatever f- fan films, does sound kind of fun to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll do a camp video games best of the worst someday, maybe. 
maybe yeah i don't um, know oh okay so uh you know the credits play and then there's a little teaser for another film another fan film being made um uh with uh there's this this pretty lady with red hair named regina walking around in all black and a gun my goodness is that the supremely unrecognizable uh lead character from capcom's very own dino crisis <laughs> series it sure is so they're saying like hey we're not only making resident evil fan films if you like survival horror from capcom adaptations we've also got their sub series where they took resident evil and put uh, dinosaurs in it yeah um and then there's more credits and, and then another credits. scene it's just they're like acting like this is a marvel movie it's i, I get, they're feeling themselves a little too hard for me i um, believe that the the that that last scene of the dude like squeegeeing up blood i think he is um i think he I, if i'm not mistaken that might be the guy who runs another notable resident evil uh page called ink ribbon um okay. i think that's him who's who's doing it but ink ribbon does great resident evil like little yeah. snippets on youtube i'm a big fan okay that makes sense i think it was one of his videos about this movie that i watched to get more background oh i bet you watched 25 things you didn't know about probably yeah yeah, yeah. i i believe that's the guy um i see i thought he was going to get infected with all this open blood and like touching cigarettes and smoking and drinking yeah but like i guess not He's yeah, just, it's I mean, just, I, you know, I don't hate that this is here, but no, it's, 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 it's the fact that we go credits, trailer, credits, bonus. It's just like, whoa, okay, this is just a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Where it's for, like, for one third of the runtime, <laughs> exactly. Because yeah, the runtime for this video is just a little over twenty minutes. But then yeah, you, I'm glad you tracked how long the actual film is. <laughs> Thirteen and a half minutes. <sighs> it's a lot of. That's a lot. I don't know. I I I uh, it's just like a lot of victory lap for <laughs> you know. Again, like I I I want like it, I I try to like especially when we do like these fan film things, I try to speak as if the creator is listening <laughs> because like I don't want them to be like be like, "Oh, like these guys think we're shit." Like I I totally respect like they were stoked to make this and they they put their full ass into it. And like, I encourage them to keep going. Yeah, of course. I, I, I like, if anything, it's like just some assholes, constructive criticism, you know, especially around like the, yeah, find, find something that pulls me in, um, beyond just the fan service is what I, as a viewer, would absolutely. Want. I, I think, and w this might come in, uh, contact with some of the subjects we were talking about in our resident evil one remake discussion where I tend to focus more on what the people are doing and what they're going through as characters. Whereas you tend to focus more on who they are and yeah. like where they're coming from and like, you know, the human element, this is missing the human element, the keeper's mm -hmm. diary. It needs to focus more on the human element and stray away from what I think they are coming from it as fans for the same reason. They're fans of resident evil. I believe for the same reason that I'm a fan of resident evil mm -hmm. and uh, that is not as that like you, you need to put people through more like ups and downs to like really be able to relate to them. And I have absolutely no relation with the keeper of the keeper's diary. Yeah. And actually, like, since you mentioned the way you kind of prefer that approach to video games is like video games are a better medium for that because you have so many other things going on besides just the visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. You have mechanics that are forcing you to interact with the world in different ways that can uh, add to the character development. They can add to the story, but if you make those fun and interesting enough, that's all you need. You know, it's like, what's the story of Mario brothers? One <laughs> our princess is in another castle. Other than that, it's like you're being led by mechanics, yep, right? That's actually a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um, so you don't need character development as much in a in a video game to like reach a wider audience as you do with a, a film or whatever. Well, the end of the day, The Keeper's Diary is a quality made fan film that stands above a lot of other similarly, we'll say, intentioned fan films. And I think it's a, it's not a waste of time. Uh, and like, that's the 
the ultimate sin that any movie can commit is wasting right. your time. And it uh it hits a lot of 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 the right notes in in terms of like being accurate to Resident Evil, but it's not above criticism. <laughs> and mm-hmm. there's there's enough in it to make you kind of go, oh, okay like they're <laughs> like i i i would rather just play resident evil again than to watch this again and yeah i think a lot of the fans feel the same way well it's gotten a good response it's it's at about a quarter million views right now or more than a quarter million views and uh you know uh let's it looks like is that 25k thumbs up on it uh yeah so yeah. you know what's you know, wrong with that <laughs> it's uh it, it, you go through the comments people are really happy for it and like you know the, yeah. and when you look at the list of c- contributors and people that like supported this you like just know like your people are out there if you ever feel like you only you're the only person who cares about something just know there are so many people who yeah. share your interests it's like i don't want to i don't want to yuck those people's yum it's yeah. just like i i think that you can go further with this kind of thing yep. you know but if this made you happy i'm happy for yep. you <laughs> i watched it twice and i don't regret it yeah so thank you uh, to Andrew Solo for doing what uh, so many of us want to do, which is is to adapt video games into something of their own, and like that's that is the the ultimate thing. You yeah, created something, you made something. That's that's the best thing a human bre- a human brain can do. Is I want to, yeah. I'll double down on that. It's like I, it's like I I always want to encourage people just make stuff. Yeah. It doesn't matter if I like it. Who cares? I'm some asshole. You know, yep. like this is this is great that you went out and did it. It's really important that I like it because I'm actually right about most things. So <laughs> just just know that, okay? Right. Well, campers, uh, that was fun, right? We did it. We talked about the Keeper's Diary, <laughs> a biohazard story. Uh, if you like that, you could uh, you could listen back. Uh, we got we got a whole mess of episodes. Yeah, out we talked there. about a lot of games. We got a lot stuff of stuff under our, our our little belts because uh, we're both trim sweet tight boys <laughs> uh what happened <laughs> so anyways that's the end of uh yeah this discussion on the keeper's diary um i don't know if, if you want to help this show there's a patreon patreon.com slash camp video games if i'm right correct on, um you, you can throw in a couple bucks uh we're gonna keep talking about video games regardless but if you enjoy it well uh, why not you and know thank you if you decide to do that yeah it's like we we put out I don't know twenty ish episodes a year at this point for five bucks a month that's like a dollar uh, that's I can't do the math it's not that much money <laughs> you'd be you'd be helping us out that's all that really yeah. matters all right anyways um yeah I gotta go clean up this uh, mess of uh you know mutant bodies that have been left in the woods it's been a real mess around here so my health status is in caution I should use a green herb wink wink. Yeah, blaze it up. All right, thanks, everybody. <laughs> if you'd like to write to us, send a message to campvideogames at gmail.com and follow us on Instagram at campvideogames. If you want to become a real happy camper, you can support Camp Video Games on Patreon. For $5 a month, you'll be granted access to even more discussions about movie-based video games, game-based movies, full-length commentaries, playthroughs, and more! Whether you sign up or not, we're glad to have you here at Camp Video Games!